Bye. And then a bow so bold and deadly. Bye. Hi guys, it's Lisa and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a bookshelf tour. Yay! I've been wanting to do the tour for a while now because in one month I'm supposed to be moving houses and I really, really want to keep this space forever in a video. I'm taking this opportunity to show you guys the different books that I have on the shelf. Hopefully you can take something out of it, maybe one book that you love, that seems interesting to you, you can write it down and find a new favorite. And so how this is gonna go is I'm gonna do a tour shelf by shelf. Each shelf more or less is in categories. So I'm gonna be saying this is adult fantasy, this is YA, this is sci-fi, all of that. And then for the different books, we're gonna see obviously the book cover and then we're gonna go through like the trope that it has so if it is a chosen one if it is friends to lovers if it is enemies to lovers all of that stuff and if it is a character driven or plot driven book so that you can you know discover if each of these books will be a match for you or not remain here and let's go to the different books also for those unaware of my channel i publish bookish content every Thursday and Sunday for you to enjoy. If you want to stay tuned, click the subscribe button. And if you end up loving the video, give it a thumbs up. Okay, let's do this. We'll start with an overview of the shelf. We have that. Starting with this shelf, we have kind of the comics here and also a bunch of what Hummer, which makes it really difficult to take any book out of it. I actually haven't read any of this, but it seems that Mouse is such a great comic to read. So, and it was recommended by a lot of people. So have it a look at that. In here, we have, you know, just stuff, kind of different Funkos. In here, we have more things about Warhammer, you know, the lore, all of that. Great. And then let's move to our fantasy shelves. Okay. And we'll start with this one. This shelf is adult fantasy. And starting with this one, we have the Born Shard Daughter. This is kind of a blend of fantasy and sci-fi. It's Asian inspired follows multiple points of view and it's a little bit of uh, you know getting of age story but also kind of the chosen one and it mainly follows two points of view although there are around four or something in here and the first one is the daughter of the emperor whose memories are erased and she needs to take them back and then we have Javis who is this kind of I don't want to be a hero but I'm turning out a hero kind of guy and we also have an animal companion here okay we continue with the atlas six there's so much a dark academia book it follows the point of view of six characters all of them are very talented they have these magical abilities that they need to hone into this new academia and this follows multiple points of view it's really engaging i thought it was going to be super confusing to go through the different points of view of the characters but i ended up really loving it it's a good blend between a character driven and a plot driven book because yes you see the different points of view but also the story just moves super super fast then we have the Kingdom of Bag. And look at this cover. It's one of the most beautiful ones that I have for sure. And it follows the story of Nanerald Mozart. So the sister of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And it's a little bit of a coming to age story and also kind of a chosen one, although I'm not a chosen one story. It's so heart wrenching. This book takes place in gloomy cities, you know, like super wintry, but it also gets to this 
forest called the Kingdom of Bach that they actually invented in real life. Then we have the Song of Achilles, which also has a very beautiful book cover by Madeline Miller. And this follows the story of Achilles, but it's told under the point of view of Patroclus. So it just follows Patroclus' point of view. And it's also a coming to age story and also a bit of a chosen one. Perfect for a rainy day, I must say. Then we have The Sword of Kagan which is one of my favorite books of the year. It's a standalone, so if you're in the mood for something that it's, well, not necessarily quick, because it's a little bit chunky, I reckon, but for something that ends up and that is phenomenal, please give it a try. It follows the point of view of two characters, a mother and a son. It's inspired kind of in Japan, and we follow these two characters that live in Kagan, which are kind of the last resort towards invasion, and they are the only ones in the whole country that remain being kind of these samurai, and that still fight using their magical abilities, like air, water, fire and all that. In this country they basically fight through ice and so this book has one of the most vivid action scenes that I can imagine and I swear I'm not a crier when reading but in this book I might have dropped some tears. You'll need to push through a little bit at the beginning because it's a little bit slow and it's a little bit like confusing but I swear to you if you can push through that and you enjoy character driven plots you will love this. Then we move to The Poppy War, which is super beautiful. The book cover is just so beautiful. And so this book, I reckon it's super popular. It had a lot of hype and I read the trilogy at the beginning of the year and it kind of missed a little bit for me. It wasn't really hidden, but it's super war heavy. And this is a coming to age story. We follow the character Rin since she is a little bit of a child and we see her, you know, going through this school and then she starts to discover that she has a connection with the phoenix, that she might be a shaman and things unfold from there. This is also a little bit of a chosen one trope, I guess, but Rin is super grey as a character and I found it really difficult to root for her and so as I'm a very character driven reader not liking Reen made it super difficult for me to move ahead but it was super political the plot advanced pretty fast overall it has received very good praise we have here the second book which also has a very beautiful book cover the third book I read it in Kindle then we move to the ninth reign trilogy matching nails and this was recommended by Elliot Brooks and I give it a try I've just read so far the first one The Ninth Rain and it was so great actually it follows three points of view I don't really think that it has a trope it's almost a thriller with fantasy on it every century something happens into the world that leads to war but now everyone has forgotten what those wars are about, why they happen and all of that. And so these characters are trying to discover what are the remnants of those wars and trying to figure out what's happening. And so you, as a reader, don't know anything as the characters and you discover things at the same pace as they do. And this was a bit heavy on the character-driven side. It just takes us like more than half of the book to start figuring out what's happening. And so you just need to stick around if you love the characters. But if you don't, maybe this will be kind of hard for you. And here we have Wale. And then we move to basically my favorite writer's shelf. We have different books from Brandon Sanderson. You'll see that some of them are in Spanish because I live in Spain, Madrid. And we have the first one of the Stormlight Archive. And just look how beautiful was also this paperback. We have then book two and three here. And yeah, what is to say about Brandon Sanderson and the Stormlight Archive, right? And then we have Elantris here, which is till date my favorite book. It's the first one by Brandon Sanderson and just see how beautiful the book cover is. It mainly is kind of the chosen one. It's a little bit heavy on the romance, which I reckon it's super weird for Brandon as of now. So, you know, we have these different characters that long for each other. There's a slow burn. And then we have the books of Andy Weir, who I absolutely love. We have Artemis, which I despised. Then The Martian, which I absolutely adored. And Project Hail Mary is currently with a friend. Then we have this book by Douglas 
Adams. Yeah, very sci-fi. We just move to this shelf in which we have sci-fi. Well, Ready Player One, which is not really sci-fi, but then we have the trilogy of Chin Liu. The first book I loved, the second one got a little bit complex, and this trilogy really was a little bit too much on the sci-fi mood for me. Then we have Sleep in the Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini, who is the writer of Aragorn. It's kind of a space opera, it's a little bit of a chosen one trope, and it was super fast-paced, very plot-driven. This missed this part a little bit for me. You know, like, a lot of stuff happened. I was in a point in which I was like, please stop, make it stop. And then we move to my favorite of the shelf. We have the Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang, and this is just so great. It combines different short stories and actually, the Arrival movie, it's one of the stories created by Ted Chiang. And then we have the Sleeping Giants trilogy. And it's a little bit of coming to age and then a little bit of a chosen one also trope. The girl discovers a giant robot. She grows up and she turns into the main researcher of what these giants are. Are they gods? What are they? This book, though, it's a little bit different from all of the books that I've read because it's framed in this interview mode. So all of the book is in this question answer mode plot driven and also super interesting to understand what happens it's not my favorite though i found the premise super interesting first book i love second book meh and i wasn't really into the mood for the third one but just give it a try if you feel you like what you've heard then we're gonna start with a young adult Shelf. and so starting with this first one i'm assuming a lot of you may know which book this is six of crows Yes, I read it a while ago. I didn't love it and I wasn't really in the mood to read the second one, Crooked Kingdom. But after the Netflix series of Shadow and Bone was in Netflix this year and I was presented with the characters again, I just fall in love so hard with them that I gave the book a new try. And so I reread it, ended up loving it and that made me go to the Crooked Kingdom right away it deserves all the praise that it has character driven it actually follows different points of views it's a high story but also a story of friendship of love and you know just doing whatever you can for those that you love then we have queen of nothing which is the second book of the cool prince trilogy by holly black this book follows just one point of view but it's very character driven i guess it follows the story of this girl that lives in the fae world and the fae are really tricksters they are really mean and it's a little bit of a coming to age story out with everyone it has the enemies to lovers trope and all in all it was fun and i found it very good the first one i loved it the second one I loved it so much. The third one, meh, not as much, but well, a satisfying trilogy. Then we have the Ember in the Ashes books. The first one, one friend have it. But then we have the second one, A Torch Against the Night. The third one, A Reaper in the Gates. And the fourth one, A Sky Beyond the Storm. Look at how beautiful the covers are. This follows three different points of view. It's a very good, 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 good blend of character-driven, but also very adventure and plot-driven story. And it has a lot of a chosen one as well as enemies to lovers, friends to lovers trope. Then we move to Winterwood, which is a standalone and it's a little bit creepy. It follows two points of view, although it's just basically one of them. And it has the story of a forest that is kind of cursed and only a witch can enter. This witch enters into the wood, finds a guy, takes care of him, but this guy is plagued with secrets. And so it has a little bit of the, uh, who are you? I seem to be destined to you. I should love you kind of trope. And then we have A Course So Dark and Lonely is a retelling of The Beauty and the Beast, which I actually loved so, so much. It was really interesting. It follows the main character, Ren, who is kind of very different from what we used to read. She has cerebral palsy and 
you know, we see how she is empowered and she's a very strong character, although she is not as every other girl. Follows two points of view. It's a love story at its core and it was so good. I really loved it and I regret this book to not be a standalone. You can read this and be, you know, satisfied, but then the book actually continues with these two books, which I hated so much. We have a heart so fierce and broken, and then a bow so bold and deadly. Bye. A heart so fierce and broken, it just changed the points of view that we've been seeing, and it really seems that the story is a different story, and I hated it. Then the third book and last book, it was kind of a bit better, but I spent so much time once that all of these books was ended, figuring out what the real finale should have been. So I'm so mad with these, although I will give the author a new chance with her new book that was just released to fight the night so we'll see how that goes then we continue with wicked deep it is a little bit of a creepy goosebump story it's the same writer as winterwood it follows the point of view of one character so it's a little bit of um a adventure driven story although it's a little bit slow so it's kind of gloomy it was super interesting and really recommend to give it a try if you're into witches, ghosts, and all of that. Then continuing with kind of this lake watery setup, we have To Kill a Kingdom, which I really actually enjoyed. And it's about a story of a siren and a siren hunter. And so in this world, sirens are mean creatures, you know, that just drown people and take their hearts away. Our main character is the princess of them all. And it's a lot like the mermaid. If Ariel would to have any backbone at all. It was fun. It was very fast read. Enemies to lovers trope. Fairly short. And then we have, and I cannot believe how mad I am, the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. I really, really, really can't believe how these three books missed the spot for me. It links so much towards the young spectrum. I really wasn't really understanding what was happening. It seems really forced. The first book was all right, but then the second and the third one, I really could believe. It's a little bit of an enemies to lovers, but also a fated one story. I was so not buying the love story that I found it really difficult to just root for any of the characters. Then we have A Legendborn, which is one of my top books also for this year. And we follow the story of Brie, who is just starting, you know, college and she finds herself into the secret Arthurian society. It's a chosen one story with a love triangle and, you know, just self-discovery and calming to age story at its core. And it was really good. I just recommend you to push through the first 30 pages or so because at the beginning, it's really confusing. The author spends a lot of time trying to explain how this Arthurian society works. And it was a mess for me. But I pushed forward and I ended up really, really loving it. And then we have Vicious and Vengeful. Look at this book cover. It's creepy. It follows two points of view. It's a very character-driven story and it's a vengeance story at its core. Their characters are super grey, find a tough time rooting for any of them, but I guess that both of them are pretty charismatic. The story though is written into, you know, just kind of this moment that needs to happen, like four hours till the event, three hours till the event, that kind of story. And we're moving to the second shelf of young adult is studying by Crescent City by Sarah J Maas and I reckon this was supposed to be her first adult fantasy book but for me it wasn't as much really as an adult story I mean yes it had a lot of trigger warning of sex drugs and <laughs> pretty much bad wording, but the story itself wasn't really an adult story. The world building was a little bit more complex and I needed to push through the first almost 100 pages, I say, without really understanding what was happening and not really liking the main character. But after that, I found it really entertaining. And, you know, as always with her, this is a chosen one with a Roman story also at its core. And then we move to the Black Witch, which is a Roman story that follows the point of view of Eloran. The story goes very fast paced, every time it's happening, a lot of stuff. It has an enemies to lovers trope as well as a slow burn. You have here the second book, 
the iron flower and then in here we have the third one the shadow one and i really loved the first and the second books the third one i didn't enjoy it as much it was a little bit more bland for me but i'm still waiting for the fourth one which is going to be released early next year so come and join this series which isn't as popular if you are in the mood for romance for witches for wyverns and all of that you might enjoy it then we have the gilded wolves by roshani shotskin which i read a long time ago and then we have spinning silver by now Naomi Novik and see how beautiful is this cover. This book is super wintry if you're in the mood for forest snow following the point of view of one very smart character. It's a little bit dark but it just reads as a fairy tale so if you might enjoy that give it a try. And then we have Flame in the Mist by René Adier which I loved so 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 much with the second book A Smoke in the Sun. This is a Mulan retelling. It's kind of an enemies to lovers trope and also a coming to age story. It was really good. I found it slightly slower. It's a little bit more on the character character driven side and I love that because the protagonist is just so charismatic, she's so smart, the metaphors that are on it are so phenomenal and I really 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 loved it. Then we have Children of Blood and Bone and the second one Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Look at how beautiful the book covers are and it follows different points of view. It's a lot of a chosen one story and also, you know, discovering yourself in this world in which you have a magic that you're not supposed to be having and how they need to do this uprising and just change how the society is kind of built. Then we have Renegades by Marissa Mayer and I haven't actually heard so much about this trilogy. True, it is isn't really a very good book but it was so much fun. It talks about superpowers, superheroes and you know supervillains. It just felt as reading a Marvel movie. It has this enemies to lovers kind of trope. We have The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adier and this is a duology and it's actually a retelling of the tales of the 1001 Nights and it follows Shazad. It's also an enemies to lovers trope and it's a very adventure and plot driven story. And then we move to the From Blood and Ash series. I have the first one From Blood and Ash here, the second one a kingdom of flesh and fire and the third one i had it on kindle if you are in the mood for something funny for something a little bit you know just sexy this is what you're looking for it is a chosen one story and it follows this girl poppy and she was chosen to be like this veiled girl and she hasn't really had access to a lot in the world so she inside it's a little bit kinky and she wants to figure out stuff and it's a little bit of the paranormal venture side it's romantic it's sexy give it a try then we have the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden and i haven't actually read it yet i'm waiting for my december tbr to read it because it seems that it's super wintry super cozy and i've heard just good things about it and then last but not least we have two books we have chain of gold by cassandra clare which really missed the spot so much for me. This had a lot of hype in booktube. It's a romantic story, but I wasn't really, you know, rooting for any of the characters. And I'm so much against the bad communication trope that it's so common in the books that has romance also at its core. And it happened in here a little bit and that, you know, just pisses me so much. Just if you could just talk. Sorry. We have Strange the Dreamer which is also one of my top books for the year by Lainey Taylor. And this book was just so, so good. It is beautifully written. It's a little bit of a chosen one story. Very good duology, Stranger's Dreamer and the Muse of Nightmares. Warms your heart so much, although the plot gets a little bit complex and a little bit dark, more leaning towards the second book. If you like powers, if you like good characters that fell in love, that have a slow burn, give it a try. And then we got to our Sarah J Maas shelf. Yay. I have the different books of Thorns of Glass, The Ones That Are Missing, Friends Have It, as well as Courts of Thorns and Roses, which friends also have it. So I just have the second and kind of the well, fourth and 
fifth one. If you are into the chosen one trope, you need to read this because with Sarah J Maas, you're not just some chosen one. You are kind of a, the chosen one. It's just so all over the top. And all of her books uh, have romantic stories at its core. It might be friends to lovers. It might be enemies to lovers. The last book I read this year, A Court of Silver Flames, which is kind of a continuation of the trilogy of A Court of Thorns and Roses. And it got like so much smart on it. I guess these ones were more adventure oriented. I found the story super interesting with different points of view and it was very character driven. Meanwhile, The Court of Thorns and Roses is just more on the... I love you, you are fantastic. Last but not least, more classics, I guess. We have Tolkien with Lord of the Rings and we have George R. R. Martin with A Song of Ice and Fire, The Witcher over that. And I'm just going to make the last shelf review very fast because I don't know if you're gonna be interested physics and biology books I have this one which is a neuro comic so if you're interested in neuroscience this is a very good way to start it explains the basics in a very fun and engaging way work related or non-fiction more business oriented so kind of inspired the hard things about hard things more books over here and actually a little bit more over there and that was it for today I really hope you enjoyed the book tour if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and we'll see each other real soon with another video. Bye!